Hey, what is good, everybody? My name is Nick Ingvall. Going to catch up with one of my good friends in this whole sneaker thing. And uh, just to give you a little background on how long I have been a fan of, of this individual, um, I had to look it up. So I pulled it up here on my computer. I wrote about what Gary here does on September 14th of 2011 on my personal blog. Because when I saw what he was doing, I was like, this shit is amazing. I need to talk about this. So Gary, Freehand Profit, what's good, man? How you doing? Nick, so good to see you, brother. Like you said, man, we go way back. We, I don't like to uh, throw OG out there lightly, but I think at this point, man, that's that's what we're doing here. We, we, we've been around the block a few times, but it's always good to see a familiar face, man. Yeah, likewise, man. Likewise, it's it's been a it's been a crazy year, year and a half, um, and I just think that uh, you know, this the, the the podcast for me has been like, I don't know, it's like the the smallest form of of keeping just a little bit of a mm -hmm. finger on the pulse and keeping in touch with people, and now I'm like, you know, like, can can I, you know, obviously we're recording remotely, but like. I'm ready to do this in person, man. Like I'm ready to like, you know, let's, let's go, let's go grab some, some food yeah. and, and kick it and like get back into like feeling good about things. Cause I feel like we're all on the verge of like, like that next mm -hmm. thing, right? Like what is that next, you know, just like huge thing that gets us going. Cause we're all looking for it. So I think it's going to be, you know, it's been a rough time, but I think we're all kind of like super optimistic yeah. and I know you are pretty excited about your future. So I guess like, Let's give like a back a, a quick background on who you are for those that don't sure, know you. Sure. Uh, so my name's Gary Lockwood, but better known as Freehand Profit. And for the last uh, decade, actually, I've been dissecting, destroying, uh, chopping up highly coveted sneakers and making one of a kind masks, often gas masks um, from from these as a form of of art sculpture and photography combined. Yeah, man. So like I, I, the, the one that caught me was that stormtrooper. I, I wasn't, I didn't actually think about one, you know, I'm just a star Wars fan. I wasn't actually thinking I wear the stormtrooper shirt, but like now that I'm looking at it, I realize it makes sense. Right? Um, so how did, how did you first, you know, kind of like even start with a, with a mask and sneakers, right? So um, the idea came about during a year-long daily project called Mass 365, uh, and that was inspired by uh, Noah Scalin's Skull-A-Day project. Um, and this was back in the day of, of blogs, <laughs> which are yep. fairly fairly different than, than what we knew. Them. But uh, so every day for that year, I would make or design a mask and, and put it up on my blog. And um, I was really exploring different materials, uh, really drawn to gas masks, but, um, you know, I've been an artist since a kid, but I, I was a two dimensional artist drawing, painting. Um, but you can't really paint on a gas mask. Like I could paint on a lot of things, but it just peels or flakes off of that latex or rubber. Um, so I had to find new ways and new materials. And, uh, a friend's mom was throwing out a, uh, old handbag that the lining was deteriorating. I said, well, you know, if you're going to throw that out, I I'm going to cut it up and I'll make something out of it. And I wrapped it around this gas mask and I loved the process and I loved the results, but I don't love handbags. I don't know anything about handbags. That was right. just like an opportunity. Um, so I thought about it and I looked for quality leathers and interesting color combinations and dope branding and Oh, man, my sneakers got all of that. So, um, I started, I started small, you know, I, I picked up, uh, these SB blazers from a Nike outlet in Vero beach. Uh, the green sparks got two pairs, $20 a pair. Uh, and you know, that one, to one, the rock, one, to stock became one to chop one to rock, um, <laughs> with the goal of, always trying to make the mask out of one pair of those sneakers so that the other pair could be on my feet for the photo shoot. And like, that was my way of, of showing where it came from to, to where it could go. Um, and you know, there's so many different factors to the process that kept me coming back to it, whether it's the, 
Um, it's tied to hip hop with, which has always been my biggest inspiration. Um, and the way that that shows through is, is not only through the sneakers, which is why I'm into sneakers, you know, kicks have always been like a staple of hip hop culture, you know, whether it's your shell toes, you know, your Cortez, your Air Force Ones, Timberlands, like, and those were the era that, you know, obviously reflected, uh, where, where we, uh, grew up. Um, but all that being said, the, the process itself is also a reflection of hip hop. The way a DJ or producer will sample a record is the way I sample a sneaker. Um, the way a graffiti artist rearranges the alphabet and letter forms is the way I twist and, um, move, move the sneaker parts. Uh, so all of that, you know, is for me, the, the reflection of the art form that inspired me. Um, with that said, the gas mask is the other symbol that I play with most often. And that reflects, uh, you know, the, the, the ills of, of the world, you know, the, um, environmental destruction, you know, being a world at war, the civil unrest, uh, you know, it's, it's also a symbol of protection. So, you know, for me personally, um, the gas mask is kind of like this wish that I had a way to filter out all the negative shit that was surrounding me and choking me on some days. So like, um, that combined with the sneakers is, is for me again, tying into, to what I love about hip hop, which is it's the combination of the fly and the flashy and, um, also the, the knowledge and the, the consciousness and, um, speaking to change and revolution. So, um, yeah, that's probably, that's great. A bit man. more of an answer than you were expected, but sometimes, you know, you crack that Pandora's box open. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy because, you know, hip hop is that for me, right? I mean, just music in general, right? I, I, uh, I, I might've mentioned this on a previous episode, but you know, I was a big Rage Against the Machine fan, right? Like, you know, yeah, sir. so much about like emotional music, let's say, or, or elevated mm -hmm. music is the, yeah. the consciousness doesn't matter if it comes in, in rage against the machine form or public enemy form. It's, it's mm -hmm. the consciousness that I relate to. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so rage announcing that they're coming back for Coachella and all that before the pandemic, it was like, okay, I never got to see them. Mm -hmm. My old ass is going to be mm -hmm. out there in a mosh pit and yeah. you know, hopefully <laughs> I survive, but <laughs> I started Let's going go. back into it. it. So I've been listening to a lot, which also is a, mm -hmm. is a, is an insight into how like, you know, life has been for the last year or two, yeah. but I was talking to my girlfriend about it and she was kind of like, so, so was it in you first or, or was it listening to them? Like, well, how, how did that work? Mm. Right. Cause mm. so that mm -hmm. sent me down a whole kind of rabbit hole of, mm -hmm. of music around the early nineties. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, mm -hmm. that first rage album came out in I think 92, and for me, that's like right at the beginning of high school and like all sorts of parental challenges, I will say, you know, mm -hmm. me trying to say like, hey, I want to be my own person. But it's just mm -hmm. a, it's just a really interesting kind of it's it's beautiful to hear you say it like that because it's so it, it, it makes so much more sense even to me who's known you and known what you do. And I think that's that's such a just such a beautiful thing. How, did you, when you first started, like the, the mask or the gas mask, even like the functionality of it, were you thinking that mm -hmm. all along? Was that always something you were just like, I'm going to make this functional too? Or was it um, something you've toyed with? It was, I, you know, it's, I feel like it's kind of always in the back of the mind. Um, yeah. And I think the work helped me examine and better put words to why I was drawn to the icon uh, of the gas mask, the, the symbolism yeah. of sneakers, the, what they meant to me as, you know, as part of my identity. Um, you know, there's and I think that's also why the work is so personal to me. You know, the gas mask is not just like everything that we talked about, but it's also, um, it's, it, in ways it's a tribute to my dad who I got my do it yourself nature from, um, 
you know, I had, while other kids had, like, you know, store bought like army costumes or knights. And I had a, I had a wood shield with a leather belt on the back of it that we painted. And I had his army surplus gas mask. And like, then later when, when I got into graffiti, obviously respirators and all of that became very symbolic and, um, very literal at the same time of, of trying to protect my lungs. Um, so I think it was, it was all there, but I maybe didn't understand it until I, you know, did it 200 sometimes, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, and I, I think that's what keeps me coming back to the work, uh, is that there's still so many stories to tell, so many things to explore, understand and express through the work. Um, at that same time, there's so many other things that I'm also capable of. And so like the work now is also about pushing past being the mask guy, um, which is, is I, I, I don't, I guess maybe ironic that like in a masked world, the mask guy, like at the start of the pandemic, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't happy about it, but I was like, okay, at least, at least now my work is more relevant than ever. Like yeah. maybe folks will understand like why a mask is so important, but the, the and, and it kind of did like, I don't get the question that I got for the first 10 years of why masks. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked me that anymore. Like, but we're so fatigued from wearing masks, whether you're pro mask or anti mask. And I'm, I'm pro mask myself, but even I'm like, you know what? Don't say mask right now. I don't, I don't want to do <laughs> yeah. it. I, I just took my, let off. me breathe like, the air again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 Let my ears calm down a little bit. Let me, for me, it was the beard dent. That was, that was the thing that like really was the most frustrating thing is that like, Oh, big, beautiful beard with just this ugly mask bent in it every time I took it off. So like I, I wore mask steady, you know, cause Hey, look, it's, it's better this way, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, it's been, it's been really tough since COVID hit and, and I've had to pivot qu quite a number of times. Um, because I think I think people have been a little bit adverse to masks and brands don't like it muddies the waters like pre COVID. Yeah. I was just the weird mask guy. But post COVID, it's like, oh, are these are these virus protection? Is this like, you know, it people get more confused instead of less. So, you know, there's there's a there's some there's some change on the way. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say that and not not to say that I'm leaving masks behind. Um, but it's, it's crossed my mind. I might, um, you know, again, you know, came from mass 365. So part of me thinks that I should just have 365 masks. I'm at 210. So that leaves me a good, good 150 to, uh, to really show out and, and do a grand finale. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I haven't, I haven't planned that far ahead. Like everything. I, I feel like that I've done in my career has been fairly organic. Um, I know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how exactly to describe that. It's not that um, I don't go out and get it, that, that you know, you yeah. have to, you have to be a go-getter, but um, I guess not overreaching or, or paying better attention to personal growth and allowing um, that growth and the work to kind of speak for itself. Like, I don't necessarily like to say that because you really do, like, so much of being an artist these days is marketing and promotion. Yeah. And uh, I fight that because I don't think that's the way it should be. Even though I know that's how it is, doesn't mean I have to adapt and accept that. So, um maybe to my own detriment and the fact that like, I probably should spend more time figuring out discord and TikTok and all these other like new ways to connect with the community. But like, as you know, as a patron, I, I, 
uh, try to put that energy there. And like, also most of my audience is on Instagram. So whether or not the algorithm is working in my favor or, uh, or not, you know, most of the audience probably won't see it, but I got to put it up there for them to see if they, if they come look at yeah. it. So it, I'm sure that whole ramble was a bit, bit confusing, but I think that's a good slice of, of the reality of it. It's like, we're just constantly spinning around trying to make sense of a new, new world and where we fit into it and how we fit into it and how we survive it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, that's such a, an ongoing conversation for myself and, you know, I I can totally rate relate Uh, on one hand, I'm not a, self-promotion right. guy at all. Right. Like, I mean, you know, like I'm, I'd much rather be the guy behind the scenes putting people together and, and letting the cool mm-hmm. people do everything. Like, yeah, I want to hang out with all the cool people, but like, I mean, even just putting my face on camera over the last year or two is like mm-hmm. so new to me. So it's like, I'm doing it intentionally to push yeah. myself beyond my comfort zone and, you know, slowly but surely I'm getting more comfortable with it. You know, I have all these little weird speech things that I hear and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. much better than it was a year ago. Right. Practices everything um, and regularity. But yeah, yeah it, it really is. Um, but how, how do you how do you navigate that as an artist? Do you like have you ever do you have a manager? Do you just uh, I did. Down I, that you know, path? And like, I, how do you I, decide to I had do that? a manager for about. I want to say about a year. It might've been a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, and in some scenarios, it was a huge help. Uh, one thing that I did learn from that is that, um, it's very important, the relationships that we build. And while sometimes it's nice to have a filter between you and a client or a collector, that filter also means that there's a barrier. Um, so, whereas I get to play nice and let the manager say, Hey, we need that payment right now. And that doesn't cause any animosity. It also doesn't build a bridge between me and that person where like they got one on one time with me and my most devoted collectors and long standing clients are folks that like really had that one on one, you know, relationship, like the ones that came into our home you know, and, and, uh, saw the, saw the work and saw me, you know, doing the work. Um, those are the people that are still supportive, you know, eight, nine years later. Uh, whereas the folks that like I made work for in that year and a half with the manager, they didn't get that one-on-one time. So I don't even know who to reach out to in the sense like, so, uh, I have a, a, show coming up uh in november at scad fash in atlanta uh and we're gathering up as many masks as we can from the last 10 years uh for display and certain ones i'm just having a hell of a time tracking down because they were done for brand work and i no longer have an email because that person's moved on to a different company um or you know it was through an ad agency and they no longer work with that brand. Maybe that brand got got those masks and decided to send them off to, you know, as Christmas gifts for for so and so, or they're they're in the wind. Uh, so it's yeah. it's it's a trip. It's a trip. So that's kind of interesting. I I, I didn't really think about this before, but you know, what's that like? <laughs> I mean, just because sneakers kind of is like the the, the talking point mm-hmm. in the middle of all this, but like, it's almost like we, t- we were talking about before we were recording about like when you pick and choose when right. to let something go that, you know, may have served its purpose or maybe you just mm-hmm. lost interest in. How do you do that with sure. mask, right? Like, I, I mean, I'm sure at some point you've, you've put so much work into something and it's like, okay, the final piece in that that mm-hmm. crescendo of, of, you know, mm-hmm. getting to that point has to be something that you're like probably fairly attached sure. to, sure. <laughs> I would assume. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, creative in that way. So 
I can't, I can't really, I'm trying to think of ways that it applies to me, but it, it it's not there, but like, it's gotta be like, okay, well, you know, these are kind of my kids in a mm-hmm. sense, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I put so much into this, what's that like for you? And like, how do you kind of, or, or maybe even like the first time, you know, you let one go or sold one. And then how does that play into how you think about them now? Sure. Uh, you know, the thing about the, the collectors is um, they're about as different as the masks. Uh, and so there's so many different types of relationships that are formed uh, either with me and the client or for me and the mask. Um, and you know, there's so, okay. So there's collectors who come to me with a sneaker and they say, I want you to make a mask out of this, or what would you do with these? And, you know, for example, uh, the Doran Becker five mask, which I turned into an angler fish. That was a collector who brought me the DV fives and said, what would you do with these? And I was like, Oh, okay. Here we go. Like, I really want to work with these, uh, but I'm not normally a patent leather guy. So what comes to mind when I think about that? And like, I pitched a, a xenomorph, uh, and he, he wasn't really from aliens. Uh, he wasn't feeling that. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I actually have one of those in the works out of 11 lab fours. So just hold on a little bit longer, but, uh, I told him, I was like, look, I, I kind of see an angler fish, man. I was like, I know, I, I thought that was a total wild card. I was like, there's no way someone's going to sacrifice their Dornbecker fives and pay me thousands of dollars in order to make them an angler fish mask. And he agreed and thank God, because to me, that's one of my best pieces. Like, I have a hard time topping that because like, there's so many things that just worked out so well on that, on that piece. Um, so that that's one type of collector that that same collector, however, said, I want an Iron Man mask. And so he was like, what shoe would you make that Iron Man mask out of? I threw him a little bit of a curveball. I said, let's go with the um, five lab threes. Let's get both colorways. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make a war machine helmet and gauntlet. We'll photograph that. Then we're going to send it off to Mosh. Mosh is going to paint it in gold and red. And then we have Iron Man. So we kind of have two masks in one. Um, and, and, and that's the way that one went. But then there's other, there's so many other, um, you know, there's collectors that buy existing work, which I love, but they're far and few between. Um, yeah. Which, which sucks because I really, I want to take more chances with the work and like, I'm willing to take more chances than maybe collectors are. Um, the safe bets for collectors are, are hype sneakers, you know, cause they know it's going to appreciate yeah. and get that wow factor. For me, I'm like, I know what those materials can do. Um, so it's not just, it's not just about the hype. You know, there's so many, there's so much other history or just interesting materials, interesting colorways that, um, that I want to work with or, or enjoy working with. Um, and you know, certain, certain stories are told through different materials. So, you know, uh, a suede sneaker is going to bring different energy than, you know, tumbled leather or, uh, you know, some of the newer, you know, uh, synthetic materials. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy too, because I think like the, uh, and, and maybe you could talk to, to, materials a little bit more in a sense because in sneakers right like you know the older generation now Mm -hmm. that we are Mm -hmm. uh kind of defaults to like give me the good leather Mm -hmm. give me the good suede right you know maybe maybe like the traditional mesh Mm -hmm. you know maybe a little bit of new buck right but like now you know i think of like I, i i think like the uh I forget the name of the LeBron 11. It's like that green color that you did. The King's that. Pride. The King's Pride. Yeah. Like when that shoe came out, I was like, okay, I think it's crazy looking, mm-hmm. right? The shoe itself is just like, I love the LeBron 11. Yeah. It's it's weird. It's out there. It's it's so far beyond what you would expect from a basketball shoe. Performance is shit, but like, design-wise, it's gorgeous to me. Yeah, exactly. And 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 like, I think of that as like the material of like this weird, like, 
I don't know, foam. Mm -hmm. And like half the time it's like, like, yeah, like the newer stuff, you know, to me, just because I'm more of a more old school, I guess, like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't need all that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like fascinated to see people, you know, as creatives, what they do with it and where they go with it. Right. So how do you, when you're, when you're thinking about the materials specifically, and like you, you reference like, you know, something like with a suede or something, giving that softer touch, softer feel. Mm -hmm. Is that something you're, you're talking about with the, the customer and the client? Is it something that you're ha explaining to them as well in, in like what the finished product becomes? It, it can be, it depends on, um, I guess kind of what's being done. Uh, like I don't really have to explain, okay, well, tumble leather is going to do this and suede's going to do this unless they're bringing me a shoe. Like, okay. So like the NMDs, when the NMDs were hot and I started making masks out of those, like they have no structure. So I had to think of different ways to use those materials. Um, whether it be, uh, like the balaclava mask that I made where like, okay, well, if there's no structure, great. Like, let's make a ski mask and like, it can be one more like a loose cloth mask. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. Other times it was about wrapping them around thermoplastics. So they have a little bit more of a base and I can shape, uh, shape that way. Uh, other times I would say the, the talk that I have to have more than anything else, as far as materials go with like, say a custom, uh, collector would be, um, you know, how much material that shoe is going to provide me. And if it's a material that I can't like substitute, like, okay, so I'm just wrapping up the Bugs Bunny eight mask right now. And, you know, what, uh, when they dropped those gray suede eights, I was like, oh, I kind of wanted a little bit of extra gray because obviously Bugs has got a good, good chunk uh, of gray on them more so than the Bugs Bunny eights do. Uh, but what I did instead was I sourced some gray suede and that worked out much better because I was able to wrap the bunny ears and like, I could have done that with the, the gray eights, but it would have been so much heavier and it's, it's a big mask already. Like if you can imagine the ones that they'd walk around, I, I guess it's Warner brothers. So it wouldn't be Disney world, but uh, I feel like six flags would sometimes have, uh, you know, those characters walking around. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's good size. And I, I actually just shot it on Monday and I, I modeled it and it is, it was too much. Like I got to say, like, it was 10 minutes of shooting, take it off, rest for like 15, do it again. And I, I could only do three rounds. It was a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because I went a little bit overboard making props and everything, uh, for this mask. So like there's carrot grenades, there's a, there's a carrot nice. AK clip, uh, there's a riot shield that I custom painted to say duck season, uh, a Marvin, the Martian skull, uh, a revolver with like a bang flag. Like I'm right now I'm, I'm 3d rendering a giant Daffy duck with like Gundam mech suit, like in the background. So, um, and all of this is based on, uh, an illustration of a Bugs Bunny gas mask that I did during Mass 365 that a collector commissioned me to do a full body because it was just the like just the head. And he was like, design me a full body with him wearing uh, the Bugs Bunny eights. And like I want him holding the AK. It's like, all right, well, instead of a banana clip, I'm going to give him an AK clip. So this was like an illustration from like, I want to say 2013 era. A few years later, he commissioned the, the mask to actually be made. Now that I'm doing the 3D printing, I was able to really bring it to life and just have totally gone overboard. Like, because there's, it's such a rich, like, I know this world of Looney Tunes. Like, yeah. we're going to have some fun. Like, yeah. like, over the top is okay here. This is, this is what, what, what it's done. So, um, it's, it's really cool to, to have that coming out and like 
I guess we got a few days before Space Jam 2 drops. So, you know, all things in, in their, in their due time and, and at the right time. But, uh, yeah, that, yeah, totally off awesome, topic man. from your question, but <laughs> no, it's great though. Cause I mean, I, that kind of leads me to like what I wanted to kind of dig into next is like, you know, you, there's obviously there's the, the working with, you know, clients and people and that kind of stuff. But like, what does the process look like for you from like somebody, the seed gets planted from whatever it is yeah. to like actual creation? Because, you know, like knowing that you do the photography, you know, all the props, the set, I, I mean, you do like literally end to end the work on this stuff. And I think if I didn't know you, you know, I'd just assume, Hey, yeah, you hire a photographer and, and do this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But like now, you know, people like, especially with like the 3d printing, like you're getting, you're like getting so, you know, I have full way ownership more of every step of the way. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like, what's it like for you? Is it like, okay, cool. I'm going to, you know, you mentioned with, with bugs, right. It's like, here's this, you know, drawing you did, uh, you know, years ago, mm -hmm. but like, is it start with a drawing and, you know, then, you know, into the mask and then into the photo shoot, or sure. is it like, like, you know, like you mentioned Looney Tunes, right? It sounds like you just saw Looney Tunes and you're like, here's all these things and Looney Tunes popping up. Yeah. And you were just like, well, I'm already in the world. I'm so here I go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they, they all have their own life. Uh, the most, I, I say the standard process is me taking a pair of shoes, deconstructing them. And with no plan, no drawing, I, I call them a freestyle, uh, sh letting the character of those sneakers decide the character of that mask. Um, a good example of that would be the uh, Union Jordan 1 mask that I made. Uh, no plan, nothing in mind, just dive right in and use those materials. Um, we talked about the anglerfish. That's one where uh, the client didn't ask for for a sketch. I'd say more often than not, uh, a sketch is usually needed um, by the bigger brands who need a little bit of assurance that I'm going to deliver something that they can use. Uh, but say, for example, the Bugs Bunny or the Travis Scott mask, uh, the Red October mask as well. Those um, do have a little bit more like early consideration and, and design in that sense. Uh, so, and that's made possible because of the 3D printing. So with the Red October, uh, Chi Lin, uh, the Travis, Bo uh, Travis Scott Boar mask, um, and the Bugs Bunny mask, I was able to 3D model, uh, usually using ZBrush, uh, and then 3D print these bases for me to sculpt off of. Um, and then it, it kind of just, it's such, we talked about opening Pandora's box and, that's where it kind of is with like the a right project can be mined and pulled. I can go so much further with things um, like the Bugs Bunny mask, because like in, in half a day, I have carrot grenade props that I designed and printed out real quick. No problem. Um, not only that, but those 3D models can be used later on in creating whether it be an NFT, digital artwork like that, or uh, toys and, and vinyl figures. And, you know, right now I actually am working on um, like one of a kind action figures based on the Versace uh, gas mask, the chain reaction gas mask. Um, so I have that modeled out and I have my own version of the chain reaction modeled for the, and it'll be like one six scale. And, each time I'm going to be hand painting or, or, you know, custom, um, you know, clothes or cause what I, I'm going to have to build up to it. There's going to be a few, but what I want to get to is buying Versace garments to deconstruct, to make action figure clothes for these like one of a kind art action figures. Um, our bank account ain't built that way right now. So we got to work up. <laughs> First yep. one's just going to be with some, you know, <laughs> all black and, and the custom sneakers and the mask. So 
that hopefully will um, give me an excuse to go blow a little bit of money in Versace. Yeah. When that nice. that's just not in my wheelhouse. I ain't got no business doing that uh, <laughs> at this point in my life. But for the work, it makes sense. So hey, look, let's do it. That, and that's that was part of uh, you know kind of where working with sneakers as as a as a material came for me. It was having my cake and eating it too. I was at a point in my life where I wanted to put more energy and effort into my art career. And I knew I had to stop spending money on things that I enjoyed like sneakers. But I was like, what if sneakers were the art though? Like, how do I have my cake and eat it too? And, um, and here we are like, especially now because so I'm transitioning from using these dead stock sneakers to make these masks because of course, you don't really want you sneakers on your face, but now after, you know, being such an advocate of wear your sneakers, I, I have shoes that I love that are not, I, that I want to make work from that aren't uh, pristine. And so uh, that's actually where the sneaker coyote uh, is, is the first of that kind um, where I chopped up a bunch of Nike, uh, use Nike sneakers for myself and friends. And, um, have kind of done this sneaker taxidermy to create this. I, I call it the coyote because that's the easiest thing to say, but its actual name is Latin for uh, the dog of uh, flowers and air because it was a, the, the idea behind it is this, um, well, floral camouflage, which is what I love doing. I love combining uh, floral designs and camouflage and thought about how that would play into the animal kingdom. So I had this idea of this wild dog that would lure small prey like birds and butterflies into this, you know, um, flowering field with like a tail that and, and face that mimic the flowers. So when it snatches something out of the air, the prey doesn't even see it coming. Um, so, and now that's this, this, sneaker coyote surrounded by flowers. I just, I just shot that, um, Monday along with the Bugs Bunny mask. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting out there. I have some video editing work to do, which I hate, but you know, got, got to do it. Video's king in 2021. So got to play, play the role sometimes. Yeah, most definitely, man. That's, that's a, that's a, another thing, I guess, like, you know, how do you, how do you balance, you know, you mentioned NFTs and, and video and like, you've got the photo shoots and you've got the actual like three dimensional work. You've got the, the you know, I, you, you asked, uh, how do I balance the rendering aspect of here's, it? Here. <laughs> well, how do you, yeah. How do you keep, how do you even choose to navigate all those worlds? Right. Cause everything can be everything, I guess is, is the kind of the, the mentality of what I see out there. From I a lot wish of I had a good answer for that. I don't think I do a good job of balancing at all. I was in the hospital a few weeks ago, as you know. So, like, clearly I'm not doing that well at balancing everything. Um, I am getting better at accepting taking a step back and knowing that I can't be a part of everything. Like, there is so much to do. And the speed of technology right now is more than anyone can keep up with at least for any given amount of time. You know, if, if, if you're fresh, you yeah. can keep it up for a few years. But I've been around for 10 years. I've been doing that grind for 10 years. It is not sustainable. And eventually those burnout moments last longer and are harder to bounce back from. And um, it's not an easy lesson to learn. The hustle mentality, like if that's in you, it's not easy to take a step back. Like, I don't know how to not give it my all, except for the fact that yeah. if I, I know that if I keep doing that, I'm going to, I'm going to pretty much, it's going to cost me everything. Um, yeah. Yep. So, you know, I'm learning and I think that's, that's the best thing anybody can do is, is just try to be aware of how you're spending your energy and, you know, do your best to prioritize self-care. Um, I don't necessarily know how to do that. Like, especially when times are tough, like how, how do you relax or take a day off 
when you're not sure how the rent's going to get paid that month. I don't know how to do that. That's, that's not in me. I have to learn how to do that. Um, and you have to, I guess, just be considerate and deliberate with what you're learning. Um, because there are systems in place that, that will shape you if you just go with the flow of things. Um, and yeah, just, just be mindful. Yoga and meditation has helped me. Um, but yeah, it's, I still don't have it figured out, man. And, and like, that's the thing that like, you know, bringing up the NFT space. Oh, oops, sorry. Bringing up the NFT space. I see so many young creatives, like, getting this success and like I love seeing that but what I hate seeing is the the youthful hubris that it's always going to be that way um because it's not and it's like I said it's it's not sustainable so um you know when when we're getting that attention when we're feeling that love when the community is embracing us we feel untouchable but uh, the reality of it is we are all fairly disposable. Um, and at least in, in the social media world, like yeah. we have to focus on our interpersonal relationships in real life. Um, because that's where we are not interchangeable. Like if I stop making work, the brands aren't going to care. 99% of my audience isn't going to even notice things come and go in this world and, uh, often without ceremony. So, you know, um, it's a long haul and I just want the folks that are green and fresh and have that good energy, like save that, save that pace yourself and, and stretch that out over 20 years instead of 10. Like, so, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that was going to be my next question was like, you know, the advice for, for the up and comers, but that's perfect because I think, you know, in, in all creative outlets, right. It's not just art, you know, it's the same thing for me more on the business side and the, you know, the kind of managing and putting all these things together when I go and create like a, a, a brand for somebody or, you know, social media website, whatever it is, right. Like, that like that like feeling of like you're on top of the world because you're in it right now and everybody's like yeah just get to the top finish it blah 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 and then it's like what next right yeah. like, there's no finish then, line we put these yeah, imaginary and, finish lines in our head i'm gonna be all right if i can just get to this point it's like nah bro yep. like there, there ain't no end you don't know when that end's coming like yep so yeah it's it's wild, you know, just hold on. And man, if, if you out there struggling, I feel you, I'm right there with you. So look, we in it together. We in yeah, it together. definitely. Um, so I guess the, to, to kind of wrap up what, uh, let, let's, I got two questions for you. Let's, sure. let's start with, uh, maybe your top three masks that you've done. Okay. Uh, but also, I got to do like a top three sneakers of, of some course, kind. Of course. So, okay. Uh, top three masks. Uh, the red October Chilin. Uh, I love that fucking thing. Uh, the angler fish. Yeah. I'm real proud of that one. Um, we mentioned the King's pride and I can actually see my pair and that's one of those as well. But I think the Travis Scott boar mask is probably one of my favorites now. Um, there's so many though. There's so many of the top three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, top three sneakers. Are we going models or like down to colorways? I mean, I, I you probably got the spoiler with the model behind yeah, you there. Yeah, There's yeah. so many Air Max 90s. It's 90s all there. day over here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, infrared 90s probably got to be my number one, right? Um, 
Mm, design wise, I, I'm just like looking at all these and I feel like they're, they're yelling, pick me, pick me. <laughs> oh, I got to go my MF Doom SB Dunks. Uh, that again, you know, we talked about hip hop and that's a huge part of my collection are my, um, yeah, the, the hip hop inspired sneakers, uh, or, or collaborations. So as cliche as it is, I think my net Yeezy ones would probably round that out as my number three. Um, All right. but honorable mention to my, uh, 500s, cause I've had some foot problems lately and that's the only pair that's like consistently comfortable with that ortho light insert. It's clutch for old man foot. So. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my last question, what, uh, w- what's the, uh, what's the next step? What's, what's that next manifestation mm. that you're, that mm. you're putting out there? What's the big dream now that you're 10 years in? Sure. Uh, well, the, the big dream is a home and health insurance, man. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, it's, uh, it's getting to a point where I'm tired of living the starving artist lifestyle. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't regret a damn thing. I'm really happy and proud of everything I've accomplished, but um, setting ego aside, there's more to it than being famous and uh, being able to consistently and stably provide for myself and my family is way more of a priority than ever before. Um, as far as the work goes, you know, I mentioned the, the upcycling taxidermy with sneakers. So, I definitely want to explore more of that, whether it be more of the mythological creatures that I come up with on my own or, um, you know, university mascots, you know, would look great. You know, um, I also, you know, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, but you know, it'll be a little Easter egg. I don't think it'll get too far out there. Uh, I've been working on these Pikachu sculptures out of used Jordan threes and I call them three Pikachu. If you're, if you're one of my uh, Patreon subscribers, you've been able to get a, get a look at these. Um, it's on hold as far as the release. Cause I'm looking into maybe getting officially licensed. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. And yeah, I just, I can't wait to share, uh, share the new work with you so much, so much in the works that, you know, it's bursting at the seams. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it. Any way I can help as always, you know, you got my number. Um, uh, I guess to, to wrap up, let's let everybody know how they can find you, where they can connect with yeah, you. No doubt. Uh, obviously the Patreon too. I'm in there. So I definitely suggest that get a co-sign for yes, me on that one. Yeah. Too. <laughs> join, join the apostles like Nick. It's a good crowd. Um, so yeah, that's patreon.com slash freehand profit. I'm at freehand profit on Instagram and Twitter, uh, freehandprofit.com. And it's always F R E E H A N D P R O F I T. And yeah, much love, Nick. Really appreciate you and always great talking with you. Of course, man. Thanks for coming on. And, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace out.